Hello everybody, this is Havoc, and welcome to a, essentially, let's play of Menelaus for Total War Saga Troy. Creative Assembly was kind enough to allow me to take part in this event, to have access to this build, and uh, basically what we're going to do today is something a little bit different from your standard let's play. A lot of the other content creators are starting from the beginning, but today I am going to start from about turn 17 on a very specific campaign that I have started specifically for this video. So what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna go through Menelaus's things real quick, and then I'm gonna load into turn 17, go over a little bit of what's happened thus far, and we're just gonna pick it up as a typical let's play from there. So King Menelaus, he is uh, the king of Sparta, and his two faction abilities are actually really unique. First, he has the call to arms. This is basically allows any defensive or military ally uh, Menelaus can recruit from their roster. Now, he can recruit from anywhere within as long as he is either encamped or not in enemy territory. But the kicker is with that is they cost a lot and they also cost at least two turns, uh, even if they're for basic standard units. So it's actually pretty cool. Not super, super useful in the early game, but I know especially as the game progresses and even as we get towards turn 40, we'll be able to see some more unique units pop up with that, and it's a really exciting feature that I really, really like about Menelaus. The other is Spartan Colonies. This basically allows him to colonize any raised settlement area without the need for an army to be there. Uh, it costs certain resources, you know, food, wood, uh, stone, maybe even gold, and the kicker with that one is that the further away the settlements are, the more expensive they become. So uh, I don't know how often the AI will raise settlements. We obviously get a couple right at the beginning, uh, but nonetheless, it's a pretty cool feature and maybe, maybe we'll be able to do some in this playthrough if they're still available. This recommended play style combines devastating heavily armored infantry with effective slingers used for preemptive strikes. And then of course his units, heroic axe warriors, heroic axe, whoa, 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 whoa. This is a little funky. Light Spear Runners will go this way. Axe Champions and Heroic Axe Warriors. All of these have excellent armor piercing damage. Uh, I think all of them are shielded. Maybe, yeah, I know. Axe Champions are not. But they're still pretty legit. Uh, I got to play with them in one of my other playthroughs. They are quite powerful and quite amazing. And then lastly for our hero, uh, plus six me melee defense of all units and plus four to influence over a province in whatever region he is in. We can only do normal, normal, and I'm going to load into the campaign. All right, and here we are. Let's get straightened up. Let's find Menelaus here. So we are turn 17. It is the middle of the night. Uh, Troy does have a day-night cycle, just like Three Kingdoms does. It is actually really fantastic and honestly really beautiful, especially with the God Rays. But anyways, we have uh, quite a bit going on already. As we can see here, I own the entire region of Lacedaemon, uh, uh, however you want to say it. Uh, we basically conquered Edis, and then went down to Scythera, conquered that, and are moving up here, where we are going to start our conquests in the middle of Greece. But here is the UI, and it's actually really one of the best, most well-designed UIs, uh, user interfaces that I've seen in Total War to date. It even It even beats Warhammer for me. Which I know is a pretty big boast, because I actually do really love the Warhammer uh, UI. But regardless, here we go. We have the biggest change in Total War is our five resources. We have food, wood, stone, bronze, and gold. Food is essentially what's going to be used the most for your units. As you can see there, I'm using about 2,000 at the moment just for my upkeep in units. Wood and stone is more along the lines of buildings even though they do use some food and sometimes bronze and gold. Bronze is more for your heavily armored units that you'll have to recruit eventually. And then gold's used for a myriad of things uh, overall. It's actually a very useful and very versatile resource um, that doesn't even act like regular money does in previous Total Wars. Uh, what else do we have going on? Let's go ahead and look at Menelaus real quick. Uh, he is at a rank three, so we haven't done a whole bunch in terms of ranking him up in... Uh, in the 17 turns. But what's really cool is his skill tree, if you wanna call it a skill tree. Basically, every level he gets, he can unlock further down the line. 
just basically unlocks a myriad of things from abilities to buffs to um, all sorts of stuff. Eventually, I think he can even get a chariot. There we go. But what's even cooler is that if you want, when you have him unlocked, if he unlocks like the Dread of Ares, once I unlock another skill, I can go into a further skill tree. So it's almost like a sub skill tree. And now it does take up a full point, so that is something to consider. But regardless, you can actually get some pretty cool buffs that I've used in previous campaigns. It's all pretty good and well. He can have a set, set amount of equipment. This is much like um, a Warhammer does. A lot of these things are going to be very reminiscent of Warhammer. We have a whole bunch of treats, uh, traits, excuse me. And uh, yeah, his army upkeep is currently at 2,000 food. It's a home record. And we are going to get back here. What are we going to look at next? Uh, royal decrees. So royal decrees are essentially the tech tree version of uh, of Total War Troy, except for their decrees. You don't unlock new uh, units or anything like that. That is all unlocked via the building tree. But you do unlock some buffs. You unlock like 15% battle speed, 12% to recruitment, 7 to growth. The kind of first tier of all of these unlocks a, a basically a faction wide increase in certain resources. So there's a lot of versatility that you can choose in here. I'm not uber crazy about the Royal Decree system right now. Uh, not real sure how to shake it up enough, but regardless, it is kind of a cool feature and it does you know vary itself from other Total Wars. We have our Diplomacy screen. Diplomacy is a little funky simply because you don't have access to a lot of things like in normal Total War. For one thing, there are no trade agreements. There is no trade per se with that, which is a little funky to get used to. Instead, you have a single barter or you have a barter agreement, which is just an agreed exchange of resources depending on what you want to exchange. So we can have our economic resources of both factions. It kind of gives you a good idea. I think it's a little bit cheatish, um, but I understand the system behind it, so I'm okay with it. But basically, if I need food, I can go and filter through by who has a crap ton of food. And from there, I can decide if I want to trade with them. So we have a limited number of trade or diplomacy things regardless. You have your standard uh, non-aggression pack. You have military access, defensive military alliance, and even a confederation as the Greeks, which I don't really know how you get that unless you're just super powerful. I haven't really seen anyone be remotely willing to confederate yet. But what you won't see is a client state thing, and that is actually not something that Menelaus can do. He cannot get client states, um, which is a bit interesting and a little frustrating at the same time. But again, we're playing towards more the storyline of it, so it is what it is. I'm not super thrilled, but I'll, I'll, I'll be okay. And then again, barter agreement and a single barter. Now, what you can do is if you share a border with, uh, with a faction, so I believe... Arcadians, we could, even though we're about to go to war with them, uh, we could trade a region. So basically region trading, uh, let's see if I can't find it. Maybe I can't. Region trading is available and essentially what it does is it solves the border gore thing. So if I were to get Tegia um, and then I had all but Pylos, for instance, someone else had Pylos, I could trade four Pylos for another settlement. So it's kind of a settlement exchange to kind of solve up that border gore. Next, we're gonna look at Divine Will. I'm trying to rush through this because I would actually like to play the game for you guys. Divine Will is very interesting. It's broken up into four different levels across seven different gods. Now, as you can see here, even on turn 17, I have 224, um, what is it, cult level or favor, that's what it is. Uh, which brings me to cult level two, which unlocks the Mentor of Heroes. So as you can see here, I have a huge buff to morale and melee attack for my spear units across all my armies. I have a huge uh, emphasis to recruit heroes because it gives me a faction rank of that. And even then, 40% to melee defense of shielded units. If I bump that up to 350, I get access to a Gorgon, plus 30 morale to all units in the hero's aura. I mean, there's a lot of buffs and each individual uh, god or goddess has their own buffs. There's lots of ways to incur favor. You can uh, do a hecatomb, 
this hecatomb uh for 625 gold gives you a huge boost in favor which is a way to jump start the cult which then you build off of that now prayers actually don't incur favor instead if you'll look on the right hand side on each of these gods and you'll see what a prayer does these only last four turns and they do cost quite a bit of food so it's really only useful if you're about to get into a situation not if you're already in it uh, so we have various things going on there it's a really interesting system i think that gods are a little too intense right now uh, it's a little too easy to stack on them and the reason being if we go down here to my priestess we can click on sparta because we have a temple dedicated to a god in sparta i can do a ritual of exaltation which then increases my favor by 20. now that doesn't seem like much but when you can do that every single turn which it's possible in the later game and your favor only decreases standard by 10 favor you can see how it really start to stack up a hecatomb of 80 every five turns plus what is essentially let's see 50 extra favor every five turns for the priestess and you can really really stack that super quick not again not a huge fan of it but it is uh it is what it is at the moment take a look here your call to arms which is what i mentioned as you can see this gives us all of the factions uh, that we can recruit from at the moment now some of them we can't recruit because they haven't unlocked it uh, so we'll have to think about that in the future and then we go to the spartan colonies see currently there are no spartan colonies uh, that we can use and i don't even think i was able to nab oh i was uh trinicea i was able to nab this settlement way out here in the boondocks uh, and as you can see we'll be able to solve public order here pretty quickly but it was just i wanted to grab it before pylos does because that's kind of what he goes for every time it's a pretty interesting thing <clears throat> so on to my army it's a pretty basic early game army we got some lyconian a lyconian militia we've got light spear runners which is a specialty for menelaus himself shielded spearmen only got one of these right now because they are very expensive as you can see over there 95 food 40 bronze per turn is what they cost uh, so can't field too many of those considering my current bronze uh, placement and then a whole bunch of spearmen these are the core of metal House's army at the moment we have some laconian axemen which are going to be good for flanking and then finally four units of Achaean slingers now all that said and done i think i pretty much covered all of the big basics there's going to be things we're going to see scattered throughout i have various missions they're pretty standard across the total war spectrum just a way to kind of jump start you in to different things now he is a true soldier what we are going to do is we are going to go to war with the arcadians and the reason being is the arcadians have a gold mine they are the only gold mine as far as i know that is in uh that is in the entire south part of greece yeah i'm not seeing i'm not seeing any more gold is very essential the ai loves gold you need gold for various things you can really get some awesome trade agreements with gold uh bartering with it so there's a lot of things we can do and to be honest uh i don't really know that i can take on pylos at the moment uh, nor do i really want to try i kind of want to go for gold first settle down that region plus they've got a lot of regions and then we'll go after pylos maybe in the future so that's kind of our goal basically uh let's take a look at diplomacy real quick so i can show you i currently have uh let's see military alliances our pylos oh no that's military access excuse me uh we have two defensive alliances one with mycena and one with argos now because we are such a higher strength than them i can't imagine argos going for us but maybe they will maybe they won't i guess we'll have to see the speed up mechanic is also in uh, total war troy which is awesome really helps there we go war has been declared between hector of troy and the Monion Fergans, and we've got all that stuff marble square so let's take a look at the settlements and then we'll go to war so sparta is your main settlement from uh, your capital you actually can't do anything to directly uh, increase there are no resources in the capital settlement per se 
But there are things like shrines over in your specials. Your military gives you access. We could get chariots in three turns if I wanted to, uh, which we won't do just right now. Uh, we have things like uh, this uh, Fractoria, and it's a way to uh, extend the sight of your settlements, which are useful if you're wanting to try to extend your line of sight for raised settlements to try and find them. You've got watchtowers, you've got various units, and then you go over to administration, and this is where you can kind of really affect your province as a whole. Increase food per turn or wood, happiness, which also will increase your chance and unlock envoys or other agents, and then finally your gods. Now what's really cool about this and what I really like that they've done with resources is your base resources, your base uh, buildings will have less resources or will be less resource heavy. It's kind of following the gold, but in a different manner. So as you can see here, like what I really like is the temples. They start out with wood. If you want to build the next level, you got to go wood and stone. And then with, for a master temple of Zeus, you got to go wood, stone, and then gold. I just really like that progression. It really feels a little more natural, I guess. Uh, but overall, there's a lot of things you can do to really... Exploit is the wrong word. But uh, really use your resources to its fullest extent. And then your minor, your minor settlements also have that same special. Most of them have ports. This is a sea-heavy game, even though we can't play siege battles or sea battles. Then you have access to most of your resource or your military buildings, though I wouldn't really try to put military buildings in your minor settlements because you really want to save them for the resources tab. Resources tab gives various ways to increase your resources but they all come with different benefits and or, de or debuffs. For instance, your stone miner's tent gives you just basic stone, but it's not a lot. If you want to go to a builder's quarters, that gives you more, but you lose influence. But you get minus one to construction time of all buildings. You go to ore smelter. This gives you 5% to all resources, which is useful for the entire province. I recommend building one or two of these in every single province just to give you that little boost, but it comes at the expense of happiness. You have a small mountain. This costs the most and is the hardest to build, but it does give you one of the highest ratings for resource extraction. Now, mind you, everything but gold is infinite, so you're not going to run out of these things quickly. And then lastly, your stonemason's lodge does just give you a stupid amount of resources, but it gives you a massive decrease to growth. So my recommendation, even though I haven't done it here, don't follow what I do, just what I say, is you want to buff up your growth real fast and then switch everything over to your highest thing so your, uh, so your growth is a little more stinted and you can get the maximum resource. But yeah, I mean, it's basically the same thing across the board. As you can see here, they all have access to the exact same buildings and then your resources are the same. It's just catered to that resource. Uh, so it's it's interesting. You can kind of play it how you want. There's a lot of different ways to strategize with that, but I think it's a, a pretty neat system overall. All right, so we are going to go to war with the Arcadians. First, I got to get out of marching stance. So let's see if Argos joins them. He does not. We will settle this in the way. Ooh, we've got ourselves a big little army here. He's got centaurs already. Wow, good for him. Skirmishers. We don't know what else is there. He's got skirmishers up the wazoo. Okay, so if we want to win this battle, this is actually going to be really hard. And you can see that the, <laughs> the spam is alive and well. But we have the divine support. We have Zeus, which gives attack to club units. We don't have club units, but 15% to missile damage of javelin units. That would be useful for this guy, not for us. Athena will give us morale to spear units, minus 20% to uh, fatigue, plus 40% melee attack for spears, and melee defense for shielded units, which most of these are. So this is a bit of a risky battle for me to take, and we're actually going to go ahead and encircle it, because uh, I want them to initiate that battle. I don't really want to have a settlement battle uh, with all of those skirmishers. Whew, that's rough. That's that's super rough. Let's go ahead and end the turn, though. I'm going to kind of end turn spam if I need to. 
because this isn't an official let's play it's just to kind of give you the feel you this is a bug from the ai uh, this is something the developers already know about basically the ai wants you to give them a large amount of a certain resource nothing in return don't do that that would be dumb all right divine support we have it still and they're going to come after me this is going to be a very interesting battle because a lot of skirmishers is not going to be good for us <laughs> it's not going to be good for us at all they could really wreck us because they are all armor piercing plus they have two units of centaurs which of course are very rare so we'll have to see how that goes and they also have reinforcements so there is that i still think we can win we will have to move quickly uh, we will have to find ways to trap them. I think that's really the only solution to this problem. Now, one thing I will say is look at these maps. These maps are gorgeous. I am absolutely in love with them. Uh, they've done a very good job of creating some really unique map types. With a lot of varied terrain with a lot of good cover for your other units. And then just really kind of given that feel of where we are at. We're in Greece. It's rocky. Very, very, uh, very interesting battles uh, that I've had in this game so far. All right. So we have to move quickly. I may sacrifice my militia. So we have to find ways to pin them down. Uh, if we can, maybe we can rally them over into here. Make them cross up into there and trap them there. They're most likely all going to be right around this hill area, though. So maybe if we can draw them in, draw them in this way. I'm going to maybe draw them in here and then swing around and hammer an anvil. Let's see if we can't go with that strategy. So we're going to put four spearmen right here, right in the mess to kind of lure them in. We're going to put both of our slingers flanking on each side. Um, you know what? Light spear runners. No, I'm actually going to put you over here with all of my militia. Now, the only reason I'm putting my militia over here is that they are fast. They're one of the faster, just early game units, and they are going to do very well to get around and flank the enemy. And uh, that's what we really, really need. I'm going to go ahead and get my last set of spearmen. We're going to kind of have some battle lines here. I'm getting my Laconian Axeman. Uh, let's hide him in the woods. Yeah, let's hide them in the woods right here. And then maybe we can come in and flank them that way. Axemen are good. My shielded spearmen, my light spear runners. These guys are not hidden really want to make sure all these guys can't be seen until it's a little too late and now we're gonna get Minolaus over there we're gonna start the battle Woo. so the they're gonna be just a little bit ahead of us in terms of troop count but because they have so many skirmishers it's going to cause some uh, real damage so they're just gonna wait for those armies to show up before they come and get me. Now remember, we're trying to suck them in. I may even actually pull these guys back a little bit. They'll see the units uh, before. They'll see the units in the forest beforehand. And of course, they're going to flank with those guys. Uh, let's get... Move over here real quick, please, before they get over there. Maybe, just maybe, uh, they won't see these troops. Holy crap. I am a little bit nervous. It'd be real embarrassing if I just, like, died here. Uh, but it is what it is. That's the beauty of a Let's Play. So let's get... They're sending a lot more units than I thought they would uh, towards that other side. 
Let me get my shielded spearman. What do we got here? Centaur scouts? Okay, cool. Let's go ahead and move them up. And uh, yeah, we're going to have to just go after them. Eventually, they'll all run into each other. Yep. The foe has sighted your hidden units. I still think we need to hold off just a little bit. We're going to really engage them. The benefit for us is that all of these units are really not built to fight. Uh, it's a fight spearmint. I mean, that's just, that's just the straight up benefit right now. Uh, so we can go ahead and move our slingers up. Get Menelaus in here. Let's go ahead and get him rolling. He needs to start developing some rage. So we can unlock his benefits. And actually, this will work great for us. They may not have the units to fight us. And so we are just going to push. Uh, we're going to push these units because that's the last of them. Spear runners. We're going to go ahead and flank them there. We're going to push the last of those militia into there. Now, as you can see, we're doing pretty good. Where's Menelaus? Is he not doing anything? He's just sitting there like a pleb. Where? Your warriors are losing heart. Oh, well, yeah, they kind of got trapped. This does happen. Holy crap, man. They just have so many spears. Or so many skirmishers, excuse me. The hammer and anvil did work, though. They're not routing, which is on them, not me. We are probably going to get some heavy uh, casualties with uh, the slingers. Let's go over there. Where are they losing heart? Okay. Well, let's hit them in the back. Let's see if that helps. Now, one thing you will notice in battles when you see some of us content creators play is that uh, unit collision is sorely, sorely lacking. That is a known issue. They have found what is causing the issue, and they are working on it for future builds. Uh, for the future builds and for release, so. Uh, let's go over here to Agapimner. And I'm actually going to draw this Spearman. The Dread of Ares forces a unit uh, to back off of whatever they're doing and follow and attack the hero. Oh, Your no kidding. I am heart. completely wrong. It actually just does some morale debuffs. Uh, let's go ahead and hit those centaurs. It seems like they have a few more than just uh, what they said they had. Get the axemen going. Units are routing there. That's what we want to see. We're still getting pretty wrecked. Your hero. Is pretty daggum wrecked. And again, they just have so much. Where's men allow us? That's fine. You just... Here we go. Forces the target to attack. So, for instance, if we see... If we see soldiers that are just wrecking our troops, we can go and attack and hit that, and they have to come in. Suck in and get wrecked. Right now, we are uh, not doing too great. They're rallying. Good. Because we are hurting. We're hurting bad. Menelaus, what are you doing, man? Dude, you need to, like, actively seek out people. Please do something with your life. That would be fantastic. Uh, we're going to just dump a morale debuff. Uh, which is almost close enough to get them to route, but not super. I know. I know. We're all, we're all on a pretty crappy bucket here. Let's go ahead and move that over there. I want to get those young spears routed as quickly as possible. Let's get those other spears here. It is a bit chaotic, I will say that. Uh, but we just basically have to control 
All these skirmishers, man. Now, here we go. Let's go fight him. Let's move along. We need to fight him, and then we need to use... We got um, our Aristia. Uh, Aristia thing unlocked, which is very, very helpful. Uh, and now we just need to... Oh, we do have some units that have routed for good. That's a good sight to see. We're going to work on those young spears, and then we can just start chasing down all of the other units that are over here. But sweet lord, there are a lot of them. By Ares, your warriors are rallying. All right, are we fighting? We are fighting. Well, we're doing what what they would call fighting. Yeah, we don't need plus thirty percent melee attack. Let's actually do that. I would love to watch him play, watch him fight, but uh, we don't have the time for that. We don't have the time. Let's go after that. Let's see, our warriors are rallying. Oh, good. We've got some slingers coming back. Uh, let's go ahead and hit them there. Then we'll go after these guys. It's slowly creeping into our favor. Very slowly, but nonetheless. Uh, slow is better than none. Where's this slinger at? Where is this slinger at? There we go. Let's go ahead and knock out those centaurs. And then they are routing. One thing that I do not like is the fact that um, units come back like a billion and a half times. It's like fighting the Skaven, and it's not super enjoyable. Uh, that's one thing. If there's one major battle thing that I would want fixed, that would definitely, hands down, be what I would want. Where else do we got? We got units routing there. We got units routing there. Let's go ahead and send our militia into the fray. Send those skirmishers out. We're working on those young spears. I'm going to pull these spearmen to break off. Now, there is no penalty for engaging a hero. But basically, what I just did there is I forced him to come uh, attack me. Which is going to cause him to heart. potentially rout. I mean, that's the hope. He's going to be able to. He's going to get hit in the back, and then it's going to get wrecked. Those guys are routing. Let's put them over there. We've got two units that have routed for good of the enemies. Unfortunately, we have units way out in the boondocks. The foe has sighted. There's a lot going moves. on. If you see that skull, that skull means they've routed for good. They will not come back after that. So that's what's happened here. We don't need those guys to pursue them. We are very slowly inching towards having the upper hand. Uh, they just couldn't really handle the the constant onslaught, I suppose. We lost a unit there. That's okay. Let's actually turn skirmishing on uh, for him just to kind of lead some troops away. And then we'll go after these young spears as well. Have we done anything to this dude? We have, actually. He's actually hurting decently bad. Uh, we're going to drop a morale debuff. And hopefully that will cause them... Oh, they're permanently route. Perfect. Alright, well, let's get those guys... Come after these slingers. Uh, You're going to have to go over there, man. Come here, you. Nope, you've already routed there. Oh, there we go. I'm assuming I killed. Victory almost killed him. Close enough to taste. Whew. And a nice little mass rout ensues. So we are going to hunt down as many units as we can. Uh, this is too big of a force to track down. I mean, to, to let go back into the city. So let's go ahead and do that. Man, that was that was a bit intense. I'm not going to lie. Um, what I like about this, and I'm going to go ahead and make this comment uh, on regarding battles, is that battles uh, have been improved, I feel the like. Uh, in other Total the War, in the preview build that we got, uh, I really feel like this battle would have lasted about five or six minutes. 
uh, and my units would have not been able to touch them or do anything or I wouldn't have been able to pull any tactics and not that I really pulled off tactics because this was a skirmisher heavy uh, army build that was thrown at me but I do feel like I was able to pull off at least some tactics given the situation I was in more so than what like I said with that preview build so we're going to go ahead and triple time it while I go after them we did lose about half of our army it's not a huge deal especially considering that we have taken out way more of theirs that's probably their only army they may have another one so we may have just kind of won the war in a single swoop uh in a single battle kind of a deal we're gonna go ahead and pull that right there really get those skirmishers wrecked so we don't have to face that skirmisher uh spam again that's good enough. Only lost 1,300 by the end of it. So that's not too shabby of a deal. They've got 800. About 900 between the two of them. Very nice. Love the animations in the post-battle. And now what we've gotten is 345 experience. We've gotten a ton of food. And what we can do is we can get even more food. Or we can get a morale increase. Or we can see our units replenish. 5% is not a whole lot. I'm going to go with an extra 1,000 food. And that's going to be really, really good for us. Alright, he's gained a trait. Plus 5 to campaign movement. And now, uh, let's actually encircle that still. We did okay. It's not fantastic. But we're going to go ahead... And uh, auto resolve predicted own casualties will be medium. So we're going to hurt a little bit, but I don't want to fight that again. We did lose a lot of our, both of our axemen and spearmen. It's the price we got to pay. But I'm sure we could get those right back. Exceptional warriors have been found as well. So let's take a look at what that means. This settlement has these centaur planes, which means we can recruit centaur scouts. That's actually going to be super, super helpful. Their upkeep isn't bad. We can only get two. Uh, our faction limit is 12, and I haven't quite understood yet what that means because that should mean I can recruit 12. I know it doesn't mean that, but again, it is what it is. Uh, we got to we gotta just uh, deal with it, basically. I'm going to recruit my Laconian, Laconian Axemen right back. And as you can see, I have a host of different uh, units that I can bring in, but we're going to keep those guys. That's going to get us back to 18 out of 20, and Menelaus has leveled up. So as you can see, I could pick a sub skill if I wanted to. I'm not really interested in that right now because I really want to get a 20% uh, increase to missile damage because it's way better than fatigue re reduction, in my opinion, and uh, it just allows me to, to do that. So what I love about the Prayer of Apollo is that in my next level up, I can then get 300 to experience for my missile troops per turn for this army. That's a really incredible buff that I can use later on once I get uh, units that are a little more advanced as well. So this was a wood settlement, so I'm going to get an increase in wood as well, which also means that I should be able to build in Sparta. And we're going to actually still focus on food because it's just something that I so very desperately, desperately need and we're going to work on that that's going to give us a good boost and then a boost to all resources eh, we'll be okay i'd rather get a sanctuary to athena and then let's look at our divine will i can get a hecatomb to get all the way up to worship if i wanted to which would make all heroes unbreakable which i don't really agree with um, or i can even just do it to any one of these guys to get them boosted it's all depending on what you want to do, what kind of units, or maybe what kind of empire strategy you want to employ. Uh, nothing else really to do there. As you can see, we have potentially four uh, that we can bring in, and it's actually all mine. Usually, I have a military ally over here for now, but I chose not to do it this time. I kind of wanted to be a little greedy and just show you just a little bit of uh, just what is going on. Creatures of Legend, we have recruited a mythological unit, fulfilling a mission. 
giving us food and gold. Our cult level is down in multiple areas. And then Poseidon's Frenzied Stallion is the beginning of uh, the, um, I won't say mission line, but these will happen where Poseidon gets ticked. He's going to start working on Troy. Okay, this is building up that thing to where eventually Poseidon will tear down the walls and that will open up a, uh, a way for people to uh, exploit it if they so can. Now, we can't do anything, but what we can do is get a Hecatome to Athena, giving us plus 80, which boosts us to 277. So we're going to be there for a decent while for seven turns because favor decays at two per or 10 per, excuse me. And then we're going to go down here because we have a Sanctuary to Athena. Ritual of Exaltation will then give us 21 favor. She gives a trait, plus 50 to growth in the local province, so that's pretty good. Plus 5 to happiness as well, so we're really, we're really just doing well in Sparta at the moment. She is also leveled up. And I gave her Strict, which gives us plus 5 to favor of the gods and own settlements. And then what we can do here is plus three to happiness upon successful action or Doombringer for enemies. Now we're not gonna worry about that right now, but uh, we are gonna go to, we'll actually do plus three happiness. That way it kind of gives us a really good boost to this settlement, really gets our happiness up there. So we'll be okay. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to recruit uh... Renowned Slingers. Ooh, that's interesting. They only cost 20 bronze. We're going to get us one of those. And that's all that we can recruit. That's all the food we have. And that's going to allow us to... Actually, no, I don't want to do that yet. I want to go up and get that gold. So we're going to go up and head to Matania. Then I'm going to go to Alifera. See if we can do this. we got 18 minutes in this 60-minute playthrough. And again, I hope you're enjoying it. I don't do this very often. I'm sure uh, we can no. An agreement. But I figured the campaign is what you guys really want to see. And so I thought I would like to give it to you guys. The Pharaoh's gift, Ramses III, divine ruler of distant Egypt, sends his regards as one powerful ruler to another and sends a priceless statue as a gesture of goodwill. We can trade it for gold. 250 gold, 500 stone, 600 bronze, or we can keep the gift, which would give plus two happiness and plus five influence faction wide. I'm going to get that gold. The reason I'm going to get that gold... Oh, your fa uh, farmers report that the season is unusually dry, which is threatening to undo their hard work and destroy their crops. Something must be done. We can ask for help. In which case, we get minus 10 diplomatic relations with all factions for six turns. That's intense. And only a minus 10 food upkeep for all units. Or we can rely on fishing, which gives minus 5 happiness. But 3,000 food per turn. We're going to rely on fishing here. I haven't had that yet. That is unreal. Absolutely unreal. And of course, they've got units. So that's what? That's that's nine. Of course, Manatea has eight. Okay, we're going to head back for a turn. And we are going to get... Uh, what are we going to get? I guess we could get some club warriors, experts in flanking. Let's go ahead and... No, I don't want to do that. It's too late. Uh, I don't know yet. I don't know. Let's get uh, a massive amount of... Uh, let's get a massive amount of food first. Do you, Argos? They want to get a military alliance with a single barter of 354. Yeah, I can do that. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's go with uh, 350 here. I'll leave that. I'll leave the tab open. Okay, we won't have to worry about that. All right. Now, I have my first military ally which Argos was already a defensive ally, so I would still have access to his units. Anyways, a royal decree has been issued. We get 80 stone. Our cult has leveled up. Ooh, look at that. 430 due to our sanctuary being upgraded in Sparta. So we now have recruitment of a Gorgon. 
30 morale to all units in the hero's aura, which makes them pretty daggum, uh, pretty daggum unbreakable. And then in the next turn, I'll be able to recruit that Gorgon. We're just going to keep working on it, because why the heck not? Yeah, that's a pretty intense little thing right there. And then a temple to Athena if we wanted to. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to upgrade our training camp. We probably won't even get to these troops, but it allows us to get Laconian Swordsmen and renowned Laconian Axemen. So I really, really like those guys. It's going to cost a decent amount of bronze to upgrade it. Totally worth it. And then what we're even going to do is uh, we don't really need food at the moment. But what we could use is a little bit of help in the uh, wood department. So we're going to do that. We're going to look at our royal decrees real quick. Uh, plus two to happiness in your own province. It's probably going to be the safest. Or seven to growth. That's not a huge thing. Let's go with 15% battle speed. Very cool. There's a lot to do here, and if I rush through it, I do apologize. It's not my intent, uh, but I have played like five or six Minolaos campaigns, so I do kind of know exactly what I want to go for here. And uh, who knows, maybe they will attack me. Are they going to be that dumb? They probably are not. We need to upgrade any settlement building to its max level. We did that. Uh, so we get an elite unit available in the special recruitment pool. Light Spear Runners. And I don't know why I can't get the Gorgon. Let's see. Enables the recruitment of a Gorgon. Hopefully that's not a bug. And hopefully it's not something... Hmm. I'm not real sure what's going on here. Which is a bit unfortunate. None of these are Gorgons. Um, uh, we could look over these real quick. These are very much like Warhammer. You have a starting motivation. They have things that help them. Things that don't help them. What really, really stinks is this right here. A 30% increase to supply lines. is something several of us have already addressed with, uh, with the developers. Because that is unbelievably insane. Uh, and I do think, I won't say yes or no one way or the other, but they are very, very much considering uh, the repercussions of supply lines in general. They will be there on release, though. That is something I can confirm. Uh, and then I'm torn because I really want to keep moving. I also really want to say screw it. Let's go here. We are going to encircle. And what I may do here is I may uh, not fight this battle so that way you guys can see me expand elsewhere. Because I know they're going to do it. I just know they are. There we are. All right. I will be right back, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, we are going to uh, fight this. All right. So I actually didn't fight it. I decided it auto resolve uh, because it was easier. I only lost militia and three units of spearmen that were brand new so it's not like i paid a hefty price for them or anything prophecy of doom was successful and we can auto resolve here and get a guaranteed victory, victory experience and food and gold let's occupy exceptional warriors have been found well, here as well we have killed an enemy in battle what do we got going on here? Oh, I think it's just going to do that because I have centaur planes every time, which is a little bit annoying. I'm not going to lie. We have 11,000 food, which is unreal. So I'm going to actually get a couple of light swordsmen. And um, actually, I'm going to recruit some chariots. And that'll actually put us in a pretty solid space overall and then we should be able to hop over and take Ali Farah without much difficulty yeah he's been wrecked he is wrecked so as you can see we're not actually progressing super super fast uh, I was hoping to get to at least turn 30 in this but that battle did take a lot longer I'm not doing a full 90 minutes on this so that kind of makes sense 
Nostos, I'm not going to give you 5,000 food. That's over with now. Uh, but we got 12,000 food, which is actually going to help us along the way. This chick is just on fire. Uh, persuading a spy to leave or uh, persuading an envoy to leave. Oh, okay. That's pretty cool. <clears throat> uh, we're going to go ahead and go with 5% chance for all agents to succeed. And I'm actually going to go ahead and get three militia just to fill up the troops a little bit. So one thing I want to show off real quick is this right here. We'll actually get back to the campaign map first. Because when I finished my... Oh my word, the single barters are killing me. Uh, when I finished my first Menelaus playthrough, I had most of these regions done uh, in under my name. And I thought, you know what, this is actually pretty lame. Like, I I feel like I conquered most of the map. Fractured Kingdom, I forgot this epic... Uh, mission was there. Recruit five uh, units with the call to arms. Now I get a call to heroes and then a bonus experience. Epic mission issued. Colonize a settlement remotely using the Spartan colonize. I can't do that. And then we have a flood. Poseidon anger grows, which is what uh, is leading up even more to the walls falling. Uh, we can't do anything here. But move, and then we're going to go here super quick. Excuse us, ladies. Menelaus has leveled up from the epic mission completion. And what are we going to do here? Growth and happiness, that's dumb. Uh, replenishes hit points of targeted friendly units. Boom, let's do that. And then we're going to go with 10 points healed per second. Yeah, we're going to do that one. Cool. Like I said, gold is a very precious resource. Um, and talking with the devs, uh, one of the devs, Maya, she actually said that, ooh, Valiant Defeat? Uh, we're gonna have to fight this. I'll be back, guys. All right, well, had to fight that one. So let's go ahead and move along. Very rude. Eventually, we'll have to go to war with Pylos. Well, would. Perhaps if uh, time to put weapons we weren't uh, on talk. a time crunch here. Fishermen near coastal settlements report an exceptional, exceptional bounty this year. So we could do that. Get 10% movement range at sea. 60% influence. Nah. We're going to hoard that money. Very nice. So we killed that dude. Mr. Bad Dude over there. We're going to go after Alfira. And we're actually going to play this battle real quick. Just because I want to show off what a settlement battle looks like. Um, and especially a gold one at that. Oh, it won't be a settlement battle. That is dumb. So we should be able to... Oh, it is a settlement. Okay, good. I was concerned. So let's look at the settlement real quick. It is pretty legit. I love the backdrops of these settlements. Each different type of settlement has something different to offer uh, in terms of layout and in terms of everything they're doing. And the settlement grows just like every Total War before it. But it's just a really, really cool way to show off the different settlement types that I really, really love. And they've done a fantastic job with it. So this should be a pretty quick battle. And will actually be the last one as we are able to nag, uh, to snag, excuse me, our final gold settlement that I've been searching for this entire time there we go Menelaus is in the middle here we go now what we're gonna do is our horsemen are very very quick very very quick so we're gonna work on them I'm gonna get my slingers and this is going to be a quick battle just as an FYI uh, the army is just not that great that we're fighting up against. And I know we can take them on. Uh, you know what? Let's go ahead and snag these guys. Actually, no. Let's go snag these guys real quick. My uh, chariots are being a little bit wrecked.
Lyconian, excellent. Let's go ahead. And yeah, we're really just gonna throw ourselves at them. Your warriors have spotted hidden foes. They're actually gonna retreat, which is fine with me. I can focus on the rest of them. My hero will be fine. Menelaus is, is not going to have any issues here. See, as I said, they're going to start routing pretty daggum quick. We're going to put our centaurs into uh, melee mode. We are going to get uh, forces. Oh, you can't do it on heroes. I gotcha. We're going to flank around. We're going to get our swordsmen to come over here. Uh, let's go ahead and get number four. Actually, let's go ahead and just do this. Very quick battle. Fighting on a settlement. Again, I'm not super, super pleased with the very, very short One battles like this. No more uh, I even think armies that aren't as big as this uh, should still be able to fight a decent bit longer than what they actually get to. Uh, so hopefully, hopefully out of everything that we do and that everything we show off, they the will be able to uh, realize that still it's something that needs worked on, and we can work on it from there as one big, happy Total War family. And we have one! As you can see, three and a half minutes, not even, and uh, that's pretty typical. I don't agree with it. I really, really don't. I mean, we're, they were pretty outmatched. I had some superior troops, uh, but even the bigger battles only lasting about 10 minutes, I'm not super thrilled about. Uh, but in terms of the gameplay of the battles themselves, they have really improved uh, from the build that we were given. Exceptional Warriors found, of course. We've got traits and ancillaries, and my gold is here. I now have access to gold. It's not very much. Uh, it is actually only, what, 10 per turn right now? Hello? Uh, 12 gold per turn. But if you can look here in the browser in Alifera, we can get uh, 39 gold per turn. That's a pretty good amount. Um, and then, as you'll see right here, this province brings in 12 mount per turn. So even at 39 gold per turn, I mean, we could maximize this. I could get this guy, I could get this leveled up, and in which case you're looking at 100 per turn, uh, which would then be, you know, 30 turns, which still isn't all that bad you could still do a lot with that before it runs out or even hoard it it doesn't really matter so i know this was a bit of a chaotic let's play that's what i get for trying to do something i don't normally do but i do hope you guys enjoyed it i hope you kind of got a quick glimpse on what it's like and as i mentioned before one of the battles i thought i conquered a lot of territory this is a decent bit i mean it's not a ton but it's a decent bit for this island but you see this right here is that island and this right here all the way up into here is the entirety of the map so there is a lot to expand into there is a lot and i look forward to seeing what all it looks like in a late game scenario but that's it for now guys i hope you enjoyed it if you did be sure to let me know what you thought in the comment section down below this is havoc and i'll see you in the next video